Hello, my name is Samit Videra, and I'm Associate Professor of Neurological Surgery and the Director of Epilepsy Surgery at UC Irvine. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a novel treatment protocol for chronic subdural hematomas using the IRAflow system. I'd like to start by presenting a case that is very common to most neurosurgeons. This was an 81-year-old gentleman who presented to us with acute left-sided weakness and disorientation. He had a remote history of a mild fall approximately two months ago. What you can see is that his, sub his CT scan shows a large right-sided subdural hematoma, which is approximately two and a half centimeters with nine millimeters of midline shift and subfall scene herniation. There are several options available on how to treat this, including using small incisions and burr holes to drain out the subdural, or to use a larger incision and do a mini craniotomy to evacuate the blood clot. For this patient, we elected to do a mini craniotomy to then evacuate as much blood as we could. What we noted at the end of the surgery was that the brain did not re-expand at all. In fact, it was very sunken essentially no different than when we, uh, prior to removing the subdural. For this reason, we elected to place an IRAflow catheter, which has both irrigating and drainage capabilities. We used a 2.0 dual lumen IRAflow catheter with an initial irrigation amount of 100 milliliters per hour of normal saline. Throughout the time of the drainage, we noted approximately 120 to 150 mils per hour of net drainage. So at no point was there ever any additional fluid going into the intracranial vault that was not being evacuated through the drain. This is the IRAflow system. And what you see here is that there's three main components. The most important is the actual dual lumen catheter. This dual lumen catheter allows it to both irrigate out, uh, meaning normal saline actually comes out of these small uh, holes at the end of the catheter, but it also allows it to continually drain uh, fluid using a gravity drain back uh, out of the system. You can also see there's a digital pump, which allows you to automate the amount of irrigation for in this patient, we used 100 mils per hour. And there's also continuous ICP monitoring available. For the patient that we described earlier, we irrigated approximately 100 mils per hour overnight. The net drainage, as I mentioned, was approximately 120 cc's per hour to 150 cc's per hour. Overnight, we noted that a significant amount of acute clotted blood was draining through the catheter. This was a CT we obtained the next morning. And what you see is that several things uh, you can see here that show improvement from the immediate post-op CT. The first thing you see is that all that acute blood that was layering down in the dependent portion of the subdural has now essentially resolved. The second thing that you see is that the brain has re-expanded. Once the CT was done, we removed the drain and the patient was discharged within 24 hours. This is a chronological CT showing the uh, preoperative study. And you can see again, how much brain shift there was. The immediate post-op CT shows that there's still some acute blood in that area in the most dependent portion of the brain. And then within 24 hours, the brain had re-expanded and a lot of that acute blood had, uh, has been drained and evacuated. So just to leave you with my final thoughts about IRAflow, I think that having a drainage and irrigation system for chronic subdurals is really uh, beneficial. And I think the next wave in terms of treating patients with chronic subdural. Currently, we use a wait and see method where we evacuate the subdural and really hope that it doesn't reaccumulate or that we don't convert a chronic subdural into an acute subdural. I believe that with continuous irrigation, 
we are allowed, we can actually remove this unwanted reaccumulation of blood products that we often see. And in doing so, we give the brain time to re-expand and to take up that space that could otherwise be filled with acute blood. This is a novel method to treat uh, chronic subdurals. And as I mentioned, it really does uh, avoid recurrence because it's continuously washing out all that post-operative blood that we do see intraoperatively and post-operatively. And also in the future, I believe there's some theoretical benefit in terms of lowering infection rates, as well as addressing some of the other complications that we often see with chronic subdural hematomas. Thank you again for listening and uh, have a great day.